What's up, YouTube? Hey, guys. I've been off for a couple weeks and vacation, and I got sick, and I just kind of hadn't put a video together in a while, but I hadn't forgot about you guys. I got a couple questions out there that I need to answer, so here goes. The first one was a request to do a video over breath sounds, and so that's what this video is about. Now, breath sounds, what you need to understand about them, first of all, is that you can go on YouTube, and you can search for respiratory breath sounds and you will see all types of videos that give you sounds of what breath sounds sound like okay so you can hear a wheeze and you can hear a crackle and you can you can hear all these different sounds what you need to understand about those videos is that while they are beneficial they give you the false sense that every wheeze sounds like this okay and every crackle sounds like this now the reason I'm telling you this is because what you're going to get in this video is just a description of what the breath sounds are and how to recognize them. So when you're listening to your patients moving forward, I hope you remember this video and I hope you listen to the way I define the breath sounds and ask yourself, does this breath sound fit that description? Not does this breath sound sound like that YouTube video I watched, because I'm not gonna play any sounds in this video, okay? I'm gonna give you some examples, but I'm not gonna play any sounds, okay? So I want you to, I wanna clarify that first and foremost, because I think that's the most important aspect of students learning breath sounds, is that they understand that not all wheezes are created equal. And not all crackles are created equal, okay? And so they, they vary. They're a scale. Wheezes is a scale. And crackles are a scale. And you need to be able to differentiate and recognize what's happening when you hear these sounds. So here we go. We're going to start with the normal breath sounds first, okay? After we get done with the normal, then we'll talk about abnormal. One of the key things about respiratory therapy and probably all healthcare, is that if you understand what normal is, then you can identify abnormal, okay? That goes with breath sounds, that goes with vital signs, that goes with airway graphics analysis on your ventilators. It goes with just about every aspect you can think of. You need to be able to recognize that's not normal. And the only way you do that is, first of all, understanding what normal is, okay? So here are the three normal breath sounds. The first one is tracheal breath sounds okay now when i say tracheal breath sounds what you need to understand is tracheal breath sounds are heard over this region here i have my little I, I'm, a, I'm an rt not an artist so forgive the drawing here okay but i put it up here to illustrate where these sounds are going to be heard okay if you ever listen to somebody's breath sounds and you and you auscultate over the trachea okay which is this region here you will hear tracheal breath sounds, okay? Those are normal. Now, what defines tracheal breath sounds is that they are clear in sound and you hear air movement all of inspiration and all of expiration, and they're loud, okay? So you should hear, hear air going in and air coming all the way out. Okay, all of inspiration, all of expiration. That's tracheal breath sounds. That's a normal breath sounds. Now, the second normal breath sound is bronchovesicular. Okay, now bronchovesicular falls in this range. Okay, now the airways are getting smaller. You're incorporating the bifurcation and the two main stems, and you're going to hear all of inspiration, all of expiration. They're going to be clear, or they should be, if they're bronchovesicular, and you shouldn't hear any, any noises. It should be clear air movement all the way in, all the way out. You're going to hear all of it. But they're not going to be as loud as tracheal breath sounds. Okay? So you have tracheal. You have... I'm going to run out of room. And then you have bronchovesicular there. Okay? Now the last one is the ones that you will probably most commonly be auscultating. And that is when you listen to somebody's in a very systematic pattern. You listen to their chest with your stethoscope. That's called auscultation. And you're going to hear clear air movement. Okay? But it's going to be much more diminished than the tracheal and even the bronchovesicular. 
Okay, these are called vesicular breast sounds. Now, the word vesicular sounds bad, but vesicular is actually good. Okay, so when you hear somebody in a report and they say breast sounds are clear, what they're saying is breast sounds, the patient has bilateral vesicular breath sounds. Okay, this is when you hear air movement going in and then air movement coming out and you don't hear any other bad noises. Okay, you don't hear any high pitches or any, 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 any um, secretions tumbling around. You just hear clear air movement in and clear movement out, much more diminished than bronchofascicular. Now, the key here is that you're going to hear all of inspiration, but you should really typically only hear the first third of expiration. Okay, and when we talk about vesicular, we're talking about the areas in the parenchyma. Okay, so this is the air movement in and out of the terminal airways into and out of the alveoli. Key here is all of inspiration, only the first third of exhalation. Okay, those are vesicular. Sorry for the writing there. Vesicular is good. It's normal. We call it clear for the most part in the field of respiratory therapy. Okay, so when you're taking your board exams and it tells you a patient presents with vesicular breath sounds, don't panic. Don't go, oh my gosh, I need to give albuterol because you don't. Vesicular is good. It's clear. Don't worry about it. It's telling you there's nothing impeding airflow and breath sounds are normal. Okay, those are the three normal breath sounds that you're going to hear when you're listening to your patient's who doesn't present with an acute problem in their lungs, okay, which can vary. Now, let's talk about abnormal breath sounds, okay? There's, there's lots of abnormal breath sounds, okay? I'm going to try to break this down for you as easily as I can, okay? Now, the word here when we talk about abnormal breath sounds is adventitious, Adventitious is the word that describes abnormal breath sounds. So when you're taking your board exams and it says the patient presents with adventitious breath sounds, or you're taking your clinical simulations and it says adventitious breath sounds, then you need to explore deeper into what does that adventitious mean. Because it doesn't tell you anything. It just means they're abnormal. It doesn't tell you they're wheezes, crackles, pleural friction rub, bronchial, strider. It doesn't tell you any of that. It just says adventitious, which means abnormal. Okay. Now, when you break this term down, you'll see that it breaks down into several different types of adventitious breath sounds. Okay. Now, I'm going to go with the less common first, and I'm going to finish with the more common so that I can spend more time and focus on them. And you remember the last things I say instead of finishing on the less common. So the first one I'm going to talk about is... A pleural friction rub. Okay? A pleural friction rub sounds like a creaking or a grating sound. Now, now when you say that, people say, I don't really know if I understand what a creaking or a grating sound is. So I've heard it described like this. Think of an old uh, creaky gate. When it opens, it kind of has that eh. Okay? Or think about when you walk out on snow. For any of you that live pretty much anywhere else other than Texas, you should pretty have a have a pretty good idea what that is. Um, for us down here, uh, we have a hard time probably picturing that. But if you if you've ever walked on snow and you hear that sound beneath your feet, that's kind of a grating sound. That kind of squeeze that. If you hear that in a very centralized, localized spot, okay, one area on the chest during inspiration that's called a pleural friction rub and it's associated with inflammation of the pleura okay so you just need to be able to pick that up when you see it okay it doesn't necessarily mean the, i didn't say pleural effusion i said inflammation of the pleura okay and that will cause a pleural friction rub you're going to hear them occasionally but you're not going to hear them every single day okay this is definitely by no means the most common uh, adventitious breath sound that you're going to come across. But it is very important to be able to pick it up and understand it when you hear it. Now, the second adventitious breath sound that I'm going to talk about is bronchial breath sounds. Now, here's the key thing. This is why it's important to understand the normal breath sounds. Because if you understand what the normal breath sounds sound like, then when you hear bronchial breath sounds, you're going to go, wait, this 
this is important because bronchial breath sounds sound just like tracheal breath sounds. They're clear. You hear all of inspiration and you hear all of exhalation, yet you hear them out over the parenchyma where you should hear vesicular breath sounds, which you remember is when you only hear the first third of expiration. So clear breath sounds, all of inspiration, the first third of exhalation, that's vesicular. But when you hear tracheal breath sounds, all of inspiration, all of exhalation, but over the parenchyma, that's bronchial breath sounds. Now, bronchial breath sounds are associated with disease processes that increase the AC membrane thickness, such as pneumonia. Your clinical simulations, this is probably the way it's going to go. You're going to get a pneumonia patient. You're going to ask them to give you uh, what you hear when you auscultate. And you're probably going to get bronchial breath sounds. It's a key indicator right there. Okay, increase AC membrane thickness. I'm thinking pneumonia. It can also be heard with ARDS because ARDS leads to an increase in the AC membrane thickness. Okay, so be aware of that. If you hear all of inspiration and all of exhalation and it's loud, but you're listening to the parenchyma, that's not normal. Don't say that's clear. Say those are bronchial breath sounds and think disease processes that increase AC membrane thickness, okay? Now, Strider. Strider is considered a breath sound, yet you, diff- you oftentimes don't even need your stethoscope to hear Strider, okay? Strider is oftentimes associated with the wheeze, and it's a loud, audible wheeze, typically on inspiration, You typically hear it mostly over the larynx region, okay? Now, that sound can resonate down to the parenchyma, but if you hear it the loudest here, and typically if you walk in a room and you don't even need a stethoscope, then it's probably definitely strider. And strider is an indication of an upper airway obstruction, okay? It could be a foreign body obstruction. It could be airway edema post-extubation. It could be some of your more common pediatric diseases such as croup or, or um, epiglottitis. But it's upper airway obstruction causing a wheeze, okay, when the patient inhales, okay? So you got to understand, fix the obstruction. Is it a foreign body? You got to go get it removed, Okay, is it is it airway edema? Then you need to start with your airway edema treatments, your cool mist first, then your racemic epi. And if it's severe enough, then you possibly may need to uh, reintubate the patient to put in an artificial airway before they completely uh, close down. Those are your three less common um, breath sounds that you're going to hear. Now, you hear a lot of people say diminished. Okay, so I'm just going to do it like this and just draw two arrows down because that's my sign for diminished. Okay, diminished breath sounds are basically, I don't hear anything that's abnormal, but I just don't hear a lot of airflow. Okay, it's common to hear diminished breath sounds or maybe even absent breath sounds on the backside or beneath a pleural effusion. Okay, pleural effusion is fluid collecting in the pleural space. That's key because it's fluid but it's not fluid in the alveoli, so you have no air movement through the, moving through the fluid. So all it's going to do is muffle and diminish those breath sounds subsequent behind the pleural effusion. Okay, so it's common to hear diminished breath sounds with pleural effusions or with any, even a restrictive lung disease patient who can't get large tidal volumes. You may hear very little air movement out on the parenchyma. We call that diminished. Okay, now your two big categories of adventitious breath sounds are this. I'm gonna start with a wheeze, okay? Now, when you see wheeze, or you hear a wheeze, and you think you hear a wheeze, the first question you have to ask yourself is, does this sound like the definition of a wheeze, okay? And when I say the definition of a wheeze, it's simply this. You listen to your patient, and what you hear is an abnormal, continuous breath sound. Continuous is key. Okay, and when I say continuous, I mean this. Is it a e? It's continuous. There's no breaks in the sound, or maybe a woo. I know that sounds silly, right? And I look silly doing it, but this is this is the only way to explain it. Both of those sounds were different, right? Yet they were both continuous. There was no breaks in the sounds. 
Okay. Now, what causes a wheeze is anything that causes an airway obstruction, that causes a decreasing or a narrowing of the airway lumen. So you have an airway. Anything that causes it to get smaller will pr produce a wheeze. Okay. I can make this real simple for you. If this is your normal airway, bronchoconstriction will cause the airways to tighten and get smaller, right? That's smooth muscle constriction. That will result in a wheeze. If this is your airway and you aspirate this, this cap, that's going to make the airway lumen smaller. That will result in a wheeze. You have to ask yourself, what's causing the wheeze? Is it smooth muscle constriction? Is it foreign body aspiration? Maybe, maybe a peanut or food or, or maybe a tumor? Um, you know, it, it could be anything. It could be secretions. Everybody thinks secretions go simply with crackles, but that's not true. Secretions can become adhered to the, the walls of the airway, decrease the airway lumen, and result in a continuous sound that's going to be called a wheeze. Okay? So you just have to continue to assess your patient, figure out the cause of the wheeze, and then treat it. If it's a foreign body, get the foreign body out. If it's a tumor... Probably not a lot you can do except for, for maybe surgical intervention, in, interventions. If it's smooth muscle constrictions, everybody knows the answer, right? Give albuterol, right? If it's secretions, then ask your patient to cough and see if the wheeze goes away, okay? Now, one other thing that may cause a wheeze is your COPD patient. And you're probably going to have this at some point in time in your career to where you have a COPD patient that wheezes all the time. And you give them albuterol, and guess what? The wheezes stays right? The wheezes are still there. When you're dealing with that patient, you have to ask yourself, what disease process does my patient have? Oh, they have emphysema. What's the anatomical alteration that goes with emphysema? Distal airway and alveolar weakening, which means that distal airways no longer hold their rigidity. So on exhalation, they collapse prematurely. As they collapse, the airway lumen gets smaller and your patient wheezes. So the next time you're giving and dumping albuterol onto your emphysematic patient, try this. Don't give any more albuterol. Teach the patient how to purse lip breathe. Purse lip breathing will stent open those distal airways, will extend exhalation, and allow more emptying of the alveoli. Listen to them while they are purse lip breathing and see if the wheezes go away. And if they do, then you know that the source of the wheeze is distal airway weakening. And you simply need to teach your patient how to purse lip breathe effectively on a daily basis. They say, well, I can't get air in. You're right, you can't. Because you're air trapping so much, your lungs are already full, so you can't get air in. So let's get all of this excess air out by purse lip breathing, and then watch how you take in a big breath on the next breath because now your lungs are more empty okay so so understand wheezes understand their continuous sounds okay and understand what causes a wheeze anything that narrows the airway lumen figure out what's narrowing the airway lumen and solve that problem okay now the last one that we need to talk about is crackles now crackles are definitely not all are created equal because the definition of a crackle is air moving through fluid, okay? And it produces a sound that is discontinuous. So I told you wheezes were continuous sounds. That's e, oo, e. All of those are continuous sounds, right? A crackle will sound more like or or Anything like that, you hear the difference in continuous versus discontinuous. Anything that has breaks in the sound, okay, is going to be classified as a crackle. Most commonly caused by air moving through fluid. If you think about uh, when you were a kid, if you ever drank chocolate milk through a straw and then you blew into the straw, into the chocolate milk, you were pushing air through fluid and it made the bubbles and it made the sound, those are crackles. Okay. Now, crackles can be broken down into coarse crackles or fine crackles. Coarse crackles sound much more like rocks in a rock tumbler. Fine crackles sound much more like pouring milk over Rice Krispies. 
Okay, does that make sense? So those are your two breakdowns for crackles. Now you're going to hear people say ronchi. Ronchi is the same as coarse crackles. Loud rocks tumbling in a rock tumbler. It sounds like if the patient coughs, they will clear. And that's what you should have the patient do. Okay. Fine crackles are much more um, not as loud. And like I said, the best description is Rice Krispies. Pouring milk over Rice Krispies, you hear the Those are fine crackles. Now, what you need to pay very close attention to is when you hear the crackles. Okay, because if you hear fine crackles at the end of inspiration, we would call these um, late inspiratory fine crackles, then those are the exceptions to air moving through fluid. Late inspiratory fine crackles are typically associated with atelectasis. So your patient takes a big deep breath in. As he inhales, these atelectatic regions pop open. And it sounds like fine crackles towards the end of inspiration. Okay? Those are associated with atelectasis. When you're taking your TMZ exams or you're taking your clinical simulation exams, you're probably going to start this scenario off with a post-operative patient. Maybe post-op abdominal, post-op thoracic surgery. And you listen to them, and upon inspiration, you hear late inspiratory fine crackles. And that's a dead giveaway that your patient has atelectasis, and you need to do some type of hyperinflation therapy to re-recruit the atelectatic regions. Okay? So, I hope you go forward from this. I hope you think the next time you're listening to breath sounds and understand that they don't all sound the same. Okay, so get on YouTube and hear all the different examples of all the different breath sounds and then understand when you hear them in a clinic setting, it's not going to sound anything like what the video said it was going to sound like. Okay, listen to if it's continuous or discontinuous. That will give you your breakdown between wheezes and crackles. Okay, good luck to you. Hey, before you leave here, hit the subscribe button and leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think about it and I would love for you to ask another question if you have clarif- if you need clarification on anything I said or you want me to go deeper into something I can certainly do that um, I enjoy doing these videos for you and love the interaction so um, good luck to you hope everybody had a great break and is ready for the summer semester and big shout out to all the graduates who just graduated last a couple weeks back congratulations go kill your board exams and have fun being a respiratory therapist <laughs>